This week, we'll look at a couple of useful tools from Python's iter tools and how you might be able to fit them into your workflow. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I thought we would look at a couple of things from Python's iter tools package that you might not know exist. And once you do, though you may not use them every day or even every week, they'll come in and save the day in some of your applications. And we'll look at a couple simple examples. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is, of course, an import. But we're going to import iter tools. So the first tool I'm going to look at is Cycle. And you can probably guess some semblance of what it does. I'm going to create a counter variable, which is not something we normally do in Python, but you'll see why in just a second. And I'm going to say for item in iter tools dot cycle metpy forever. I'm going to print that item. I'm going to increment i, and then if i is greater than 50, I'm going to break out of my for loop. So what does this do? It takes any kind of iterable, in this case it's a string which will iterate over character by character, and it's going to cycle through it. So when you get the first item, it'll be an m, e, t, p, y, and so on. Once it gets to the last R, the next thing will be back at the beginning, an M, E, T. So this goes forever, but unlike creating a very long string to iterate through or trying to keep track of some index yourself, this just goes on forever. But it does not take up all of that memory space that, say, a very long string would. So if we run it, we see that we get 50 lines here of metpy forever, metpy forever, and so on. So that's just a, you know, sort of a toy example, and we'll look at a different one here towards the end of the video, but that's what cycle does. It just goes through the same iterable over and over. That could be a list. That could be anything that you can iterate over item by item. Okay, so what about counting? We often use things like range or a range, and sometimes we create a very large one and then go through it item by item. Or maybe sometimes you don't know how large of a range you're going to need. You're processing something that's got new data coming in or handling some complex operation. Well, you can use iterTools.count. Now, count is a little different than range or a range. With those, you specify a start, a stop, and a step. Since this is an iter tools thing that goes on forever, there is no stop. We just specify a start and a step. So this time I'm going to assign it to some variable name, like my counter iter tools dot count. And I'm not going to specify anything here. So it's just going to start at zero and step by one and go forever. Again, I'm going to create a counter variable for index in my counter. I'm going to print index. I'm going to increment my i. Then if i is greater than, let's say, 30, I'm going to break out of the loop. So when I run that, 0 through and including 30. But now, if I run it again, 31, and so on. So this saves some state information, which is one way that these are very useful compared to just a range. OK, so we're going to do an example using both of these that, though it's something that you can accomplish using other functions and matplotlib and Python, we're going to do it with these iter tools just so you can see one example of how they could be used. And again, once you know these exist, 
you'll find an application for them in what you're working on. Probably, I would say we use these on the order of every few months, maybe. All right, so I'm going to create some temps data. Notice I'm going to do this as a list. Doesn't have to be an array for what we're going to do. So these could be time series from different stations or whatever you would like. And if there's enough interest, maybe we'll work on doing something with iter tools and some larger real data sets. But I always like starting with these smaller toy problems because these are how you really learn because you know exactly what to expect the output to be. So we've got our temps. I'm going to import matplotlib because we're going to make a few plots. I'm going to create a counter, iter tools dot count. I'm going to create colors. Now there are ways to do your own color cycler in matplotlib, or you could do something like this. And again, you can see how this could be useful if you're cycling through applying different algorithms or you're cycling through some sort of different data sets. I'm just going to cycle red, blue, green. And these won't be the normal Tableau colors. These will just be harsh red, harsh blue, and harsh green. Now for, actually we're going to do that in a new cell. For data in temps, so this would be for each station, let's say. The plot number. I'm going to use the next to get the next thing from my counter. I'm going to create a figure and I'm just using the PyPlot interface because we're not going for a beautiful plot here. We're really looking at how we're going to use these iter tools. The data, the color is going to be next from colors. And then for a title, I'm going to use an F string data plot plot num. Now I could of course reduce one line by putting next counter in there, but we're going to go ahead and break it up. And now when we run that, we get data plot zero, red, one is blue, two is green, three is back to red. If I run it again, four is blue, five is green, six is red, seven is blue. And it will keep doing that over and over and over again. So I hope that you found this useful and that you'll see places where you can use some of these iter tools like count and cycle. And I'm sure we'll be talking about more of them in the future because this is a very underappreciated set of functionality in Python that can empower you to do some very nice things elegantly with just one or two lines of code. And you're not taking up big gobs of memory or having all kinds of unnecessary counter variables. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.